In the aftermath of a nuclear explosion, an invisible threat begins to spread. Fallout. Radioactive particles catapulted into the atmosphere only to float back down, contaminating vast areas of land and water. It's a legacy that outlasts the flash of an explosion, polluting the environment for generations. Atomic weapons harness the immense energy of nuclear reactions. Nuclear fission involves the splitting of heavy atomic nuclei, like uranium or plutonium. This creates atomic fragments, or isotopes, that are unstable because their nuclear makeup is off balance, leading them to decay and emit deadly radiation. Nuclear fusion occurs when light atomic nuclei, like hydrogen, combine at extremely high temperatures and pressures, releasing energy. The term fission fraction refers to the proportion of a nuclear weapon's energy resulting from fission and determines the amount of produced fallout. For example, the biggest nuclear weapon ever exploded, the Tsar Bomba, had a yield of 58 megatons, but a fission fraction of only 3%. The formation of fallout begins with a fireball. As it expands, it reaches temperatures so high that it vaporizes everything in its vicinity, including buildings, vegetation, and even the soil itself. This vaporized material, mixed with the radioactive byproducts of the nuclear explosion, is then sucked up into the air. These radioactive particles cool and condense before raining back down to Earth. Heavier particles fall to the ground quicker, depositing intense radiation in areas close to the explosion's epicenter. Smaller particles travel much farther from the blast site, creating an elongated footprint of fallout. This can affect regions far beyond the initial impact zone. Airbursting nuclear weapons produce almost no local fallout, but still generate this downwind footprint. Nuclear War Simulator incorporates two models of nuclear fallout, the WSEG-10 and a high-split model. The WSEG-10 is a simple model, producing elliptical fallout patterns. The model does not consider any changes of wind direction along the path of the cloud. The high-split-based model is much more sophisticated. Following the detonation, Nuclear War Simulator constructs a mushroom cloud and high-split, then calculates particle trajectories and dispersion. The result is a much more realistic, irregular fallout pattern. You can protect yourself from radioactive fallout by hiding in a building. The goal is to put as much shielding between you and the fallout particles as possible. Basements or the innermost parts of buildings offer the best protection. The fallout radiation decreases tenfold within the first seven hours and 100-fold within the first two days. Nuclear War Simulator and its high-split model were recently used in two studies, led by Sebastian Philippe of Princeton University. The first one studies the radioactive fallout and potential fatalities from a nuclear attack on China's new missile silo fields. Our study showed that between 9 and 25 million people could die from radiation poisoning, even with shelters in place. The second project is called the Missiles on Our Land and runs a very similar simulation, but for the missile silo fields of the United States. The study performed attack simulations on each day of 2021 to take changing wind conditions into account. On some days, the fatalities were as high as 4.6 million. Beyond the immediate destruction, the ensuing nuclear fallout can render vast areas uninhabitable posing long-term health risks to survivors and contaminating the environment for generations. In our journey to understand the complex dynamics of nuclear safety, our next video will explore early warning systems and launch on warning policies.